is being live streamed. <laughs> there you go. Everybody should have it now. <clears throat> it's being live streamed on YouTube for the public. And due to the uh, ongoing, it says here, uh, COVID-19 pandemic, although we are starting hopefully to emerge from that, uh, board members, we are still each located in their respective homes and or places of work for the duration of the recording. I want to thank all of those who have joined us today and to the members of the public watching our live stream or later the recording of this meeting. Certainly want to uh, welcome uh, those who are here. As we start every board meeting, I'll start off with uh, making our land acknowledgement, which uh, uh, is our uh, duty, I think, but also our practice uh, as a uh, commission. On behalf of the board, we would like to acknowledge the traditional land on which we are virtually gathered is Treaty 6 land. We would like to thank the diverse Indigenous peoples whose ancestors' footsteps have marked this territory for centuries, such as the Cree, Dene, Soto, Nakoda Sioux, and Blackfoot peoples. We also acknowledge this is the Métis homeland and the home of the largest concentration of Inuit south of the 60th parallel. It is a welcoming place for all peoples who come from around the world to share the Edmonton metropolitan region as a home. And uh, welcome, Councillor Malkoff Swain. It's good to have you here, sir. All right. So what we have here is an agenda. It's revised from the one that was originally uh, sent out to the board. So uh, as we take a look at that agenda, if somebody would care to move the revised agenda, I'll entertain such a motion today. So moved. Thank you, Councillor Harris. I think we'll vote using the raise the hand function. Okay, it just makes it easier. So all in favor of approving the revised agenda, if we could, uh, the one, two, three, four, five. That looks like it's unanimous. Thank you very much, everyone. And we will go on then uh, to the consent agenda. And uh, so the consent agenda you see before us uh, fairly straightforward. Um, correspondence from the prime minister's office, some board meeting minutes and approval of the March 8th ad hoc committee meeting minutes. Um, someone care to make a motion to approve the, well, first off, well, I'll ask for the motion to approve the consent agenda, and then I'll ask if anybody wants to uh, uh, exempt any one of those uh, issues for debate. Someone care to move the moving of the consent agenda? So moved, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Councillor Lorry. Uh, anyone care to uh, exempt anything from uh, the consent agenda? All right, seeing none, uh, using the raise the hand function, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Thank you very much. And that's approved unanimously. Uh, moving right along. Here we are to the CEO update. And at this point in time, I'd like to turn it over to our commission's uh, chief executive officer, Mr. Paul Jankowski. Over to you, sir. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I hope everybody can hear me. Perfect. Um, so yes, so uh, we're happy today to bring forward the first of what will be successive updates on the details service planning and bottom up costing project. It's a mouthful when we call it that, but that's really the summary of what it is that we're engaging to uh, or embarking upon over the course of the next uh, four months or so to lead us to hopefully the uh, presentation of data uh, that all of the, uh, the member municipalities understand uh, and agree with and ultimately uh, the development of recommendations for opening day service elements for the board's consideration by June or July of this year. That is the target and towards that target the board on March 3rd approved the uh, engagement of WSP following an extensive competitive procurement process 
Uh, and today we've, we are going to be presenting essentially the work plan that, uh, that has been agreed upon and that will be subject to further ratification through a chartering process that we're embarking on with the eight member municipal administrations over the course of the next week. Uh, there will be communication going out to the CAOs of each of the municipality uh, either tomorrow or Monday. Uh, and we will be starting on that. Aaron Toop from WSP is the overall project lead for the team that uh, has been engaged. And Aaron is with us today, I believe, uh, although I don't see her just yet. Um, she is intending to bring forward and to present the uh, high level work plan. And at this point, I think I will turn it over to Aaron. Aaron, are you there? I am, Paul. Sorry, I had to unmute. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, we don't see your video, but um, if, if we can uh, go through the presentations, that would be great. Oh, there you are. There I am. Give me a moment just to set up the presentation on my end um, before I share my screen with you. There we so, see it. Yep. Okay, great. Um, so thanks so much for having me today. I'm planning to just quickly walk you through our, um, our project approach and kind of the highlights of our proposal, as Paul had said. Um, so I think there were kind of three, three core things we wanted to highlight about, about the offer that we had brought forward. And it was that we bring both continuity through WSP's involvement in the previous iterations of the business case and service planning, um, but also a really great fresh perspective from Left Turn Right Turn, um, which is the firm that will lead the detailed transit, ser transit service planning effort. We're leveraging our familiarity with the municipal member stakeholders to start work in project chartering as efficiently as possible, um, knowing that we already have established relationships with a lot of the the administrative representations in your communities. And then finally, um, well, our core team has a breadth of relevant experience. We also have a roster of advisors, including Kevin Desmond, who's the former CEO of TransLink, and they're available to support um, both us and, and your administration kind of throughout this process. There we go. So our, our project approach really revolves around the member stakeholder engagement and key touch points with the board to ensure that there are no surprises throughout this process. So we've also integrated the project management roles and the stakeholder engagement lead roles together to ensure that there's a fluid line of communication between that person is me and um, the MTSC project team. And so we followed the workflow that was identified in the RFP with four key work streams. The first is developing the project charter. This will occur at the start of the project as soon as we've identified municipal member stakeholders. Um, and through this, we'll discuss the project, understand issues and perspectives from each municipality and refine the project plan and scope, as well as kind of set expectations for, for meetings and, and how we'll be engaged throughout the process. In parallel to developing the project charter, we're looking at developing the municipal stakeholder engagement plan. Um, and so that will be developed in consultation with, with member stakeholders and then plan for kind of ongoing touch points throughout the project um, in both individual kind of one-on-one -on -one meetings where required, where we really need to get into the technical nuts and bolts of what's going on in your communities and group stakeholder meetings um, on roughly a monthly basis. And then the, the last two components are kind of the technical work streams. So the financial analysis is really about the work to arrive at the bottom up cost model for the EMTSC services in alignment with the 2023 opening day plan. And the detailed transit service planning is conducted in parallel with the financial analysis. And so this will provide key inputs to the cost model. Um, the planning work stream includes 
reviewing previous service planning work, as well as providing comparisons between the previous concepts and the proposed 2023 opening day service, as we understood that that was a really important um, piece of information for the board to consider going forward. So this is a, a tentative project schedule that's uh, that I've refreshed slightly from the proposal just based on um, based on being a little bit delayed to start the project. I'll emphasize that this is is tentative as we plan to refine it as we go through the project chartering process and as we meet with all of the municipal member stakeholders. But um, we do have the board dates um, pretty nailed down as far as I understand. And so this is kind of this is what we're looking at in terms of um, board engagement. And then I'll just flip to the next slide, which is a bit more um, specific looking at the the both the board meetings and our group stakeholder meetings that we would intend to have throughout the process and again some of these dates and objectives might be refined but we sort of saw that the next board touch point being a point where we're reviewing the project charter and more detailed work plan with you and then while well, the left turn right turn team has had a chance to digest the um the business case the 2022 tentative service plan and then kind of looking to provide preliminary thoughts on where we could be going for 2023. At the second board meeting, we've we've thought that would be a good time to be reviewing the principles for shared services with you, and that would be kind of cost sharing principles, as well as looking at a more detailed comparison between the previous plans and a 2023 opening day plan. And then that third board meeting before we come back for the final board meeting would be to review the details of the, the 2023 plan. Um, so again, all of this is, is still up for refinement and likely will be refined as we get into the details of project planning. And so finally, I just want to show you an overview of our project team and some of the people that you can expect to see um, at, at the board meetings over the next few months. So as um, we said before, I'm both the project manager and stakeholder engagement lead. Our stakeholder engagement team is local to Edmonton with Katie Souls um, advising on our approach. And then the left turn, right turn team who's led by uh, Yuval Grinspan and Matt Latavo. Um, they're leading the transit service planning work. They bring recent and relevant transit analysis experience from the Niagara region. And their advisors, Dennis Fletcher and Eric Gillespie will have a wealth of regional transit planning experience, including leading the integration of the Grand River Transit Agency in Waterloo. And then the financial analysis and bottom-up costing team will be led by Razi Chagla from WSP. And we'll have Mark Sagaria and both Paul Tetro likely um, coming forward to the board at, at occasions throughout the project. Um, so we have some great recent experience doing bottom-up costing analysis for the TTC and other transit agencies. And um, we've got both kind of that financial analysis through Razi and Mark uh, paired with Paul, who's done a lot of the transit operation um, side of financial analysis. And so we think we bring a strong team to kind of get into the details of the costing as well as merging that um, with the details of the service planning. And so, as I said previously, we're really excited to also have Kevin Desmond on our team, and he's available um, to support kind of both the transit planning and the financial analysis streams. And we thought we would um, we would really tap in to Kevin where we look at coming up with principles for shared costs throughout the region. Um, and then I think the last thing I'd just like to mention is Optibus. Um, we've we've used Optibus. It's a transit scheduling software tool. Um, and so it, it's kind of a, a newer approach to transit scheduling, but it was a key part of our offer in that it's a, um, a cloud-based platform that allows you to set up a schedule very efficiently. And it's something that we think is going to let us do this analysis quite quickly um, in the timelines that the commission has available for this planning. And so that was it from me. Thank you for having me. And I'm, I'm happy to answer questions if there are any. Mr. Chair, perhaps I can just add to uh, the Aaron's presentation. Um, the work plan that you see before you is one that was uh, discussed through the 
uh, project evaluation stage with City of Edmonton staff that have participated in the, uh, the request for proposals and the evaluation of the proposals that came in. Uh, it is cognizant or it reflects the fact that there will be integration and uh, iteration with the Edmonton analysis work uh, that will have to take place and that will have to complement the systems planning that is being done by Aaron's team, by the WSP team. We need to make sure, as we've pointed out numerous times, that both uh, analyses, both both uh, systems planning efforts, both at the city and uh, and the, the work that uh, Aaron's team is going to be doing, uh, mesh together uh, in order to deliver the best overall integrated results uh, that we can then present to both the the EMTSC uh, and that Edmonton staff can uh, can move forward with uh, within the city of Edmonton. I'll I'll stop there. Thank you, uh, Paul, and thank you, uh, uh, Ms. Troop. Uh, see, uh, Councillor Houston, question. Uh, not so much a question, um, just a bit, bit of a comment, uh, Aaron. I really appreciated the, uh, the presentation. You know, you've touched on the four key elements of the approach by your group and uh, the stakeholders that you're engaging to do the work gives us a lot of confidence. It gives me a lot of confidence, at least anyway, that we've got the right people on the approach. And I uh, really appreciate the, uh, the layout of how you've uh, demonstrated how you're going to tackle this project. And there's a lot of work to do, but I think, uh, I think you're well uh, positioned to uh, you know, meet the achievement goals and the objectives of the board to get this thing wrapped up. But thanks very much for the presentation. It was very well done. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Houston. Any other questions? See none. Uh, so my question uh, to you, Ms. Troop, is, is just a, um, maybe just describe how you want to engage the, the eight municipalities and their administrative teams, just to make sure that they're on board, participating, if you will, in, the, in this process going forward. Paul, I'll start and then jump in or wave me down. If need be. Um, that's a great question. I think our, our plan is to work very collaboratively with the EMTSC admin in, in um, kind of coming up with who the right representatives are and what, and what the detailed engagement plan is. But I think I'm hopeful that some of the administrative representatives that are put forward from your communities will be the same people that have been part of the previous processes so that we can see continuity and process and just leverage those relationships um, that already exist. I think we're looking at essentially meeting with all individual representatives from each municipality. And I want, I'm saying one-on-one, -on -one, but it might be like a transit mm -hmm. um, expert and a financial expert at the same time and starting out the process of just building the plan, the engagement plan with them, as well as kind of refining the project charter. Um, and then what we're hoping to do also is, before we even get into the technical work, just launch some sort of data request right away to say, we're gonna need, we know the types of information we need, let's start gathering it so that we can get that, that process always takes longer than we want it to. And we wanna get that started just as we're kicking off the project charter. So we've got scoped, those three group stakeholder meetings throughout the process, but we also had budgeted um, for, I think probably about four meetings per municipality um, in a more one-on-one -on -one capacity. And that doesn't mean that we'll need to have four in each municipality, but um, just that we, we do expect to have a lot of communication with the administration in each community. I'm uh, certainly glad to hear that. Uh, Mr. Jankowski, you wanna expand on that? Yeah, so maybe I'll just touch on that a little bit because um, we, we've had a bit of discussion about this. At the end of the day, and this came up through many of the council presentations that uh, we, uh, we went through over the course of the last couple of months with many of the councils. At the end of the day, I recognize that the councils are going to have to be comfortable with the, uh, the, the, both the comparison to what was done in the original business case to what might be feasible today and the definition of feasibility. In other words, the balancing of 
the uh, the availability or the, the balancing of the service that might be recommended with the financial cost of providing that service. So the, the balance between service desires and ability to pay. And that's going to be uh, an individual consideration, I think, that each council is going to want to be cognizant of. And so to that end, in our submission to the CAOs, we will be stressing that uh, given that that's the goal, we would hope that the people that are going to be identified as the key contact people within the municipalities will be able to help contribute to that balance discussion between desire and financial ability uh, and will then be able to help influence or help communicate the discussions that we've had to give the individual councils the degree of confidence that we've, we've considered the right data and used the right processes to develop our ultimate recommendations to you, the board, for opening day service decision. So I think if, if there's one thing I could ask members of the board when you're dealing with your administrations. I don't think it's, while I think it'll be helpful to have a transit planning type person and a financial cost type person that can contribute data to this effort, I think at the end of the day, we also need the type of person uh, within each municipality that can help contribute to that understanding of the trade-offs or understanding of the balance that needs to be achieved with regards to those two very key components of what will form the ultimate rec recommendations. So it may be somebody a little more senior that has that we would uh, we would like to have involved in order to ensure that we get to that end goal. Fair enough. I know uh, I was speaking to a member of our administration this morning, and they're, uh, they're keen to participate and bring uh, such value as is required to make sure that this project is, uh, is uh, brought home to completion. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, Councillor Harris, over to you, sir. Yeah, to that, to that end, um, are the administrations aware that we are embarking on this project? And if so, what sort of contact have you had with the CEOs? Uh, obviously, Edmonton is a little bit different than, say, Fort Saskatchewan or Spruce Grove or Stony Plain. But um, have you had those conversations? Have you set that expectation that this work's coming? Uh, I, I don't have the, um, the work plan in front of me right now. But uh, is, is, has that been done or is that yet to be done? That, so there was a preliminary discussion uh, in December, January with almost every one of the CAOs that I had. Okay. Uh, however, it was lacking the detail that, uh, that we're speaking about today with the board. Uh, so over the course of the next couple of days, there will be a package that is forwarded to each CAOs, each CAO uh, as a follow-up uh, to the earlier discussion and as an introduction of the detail that you see before you today. Okay, so so each each one of those prime uh, administrative contexts will get the information. They'll know what the scope of the uh, work is, and they'll be able to make appropriate decisions as to the uh, resources we individually assign to the work, and then the points of contact thereafter. Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure. I di I, I didn't want to see anybody flat caught flat footed. Obviously, this is a big job, short period of time, well, reasonable period of time, I guess. And uh, if, if they're all up to speed and they're, they're expecting it, then, then I'll, I'll be happy about that. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, uh, I think it's fair to point out that we had that preliminary discussion and there were the, the types of people that I suggested that should be uh, included. Most, most CAOs were able to readily identify that type of person. We need that type of person involved in this discussion. And to, to Aaron's earlier point, while there were a number of staff that were involved in the earlier efforts in 2019 and 2000, and even as late as, as last year in 2021, there were a few instances where um, the, there, there may have been a, uh, a, a service desire uh, input that was expressed, but there 
perhaps sometimes we were lacking the ability to balance the, the cost side of the equation with the person that was at the table. And so it might demand a little bit of a, a, a fresh look at in one or two or three of the municipalities as to who might be the lead person identified. Okay, fair enough. Uh, any follow-up, Gordon? Okay. Uh, well, uh, I'm looking forward to this project kicking off uh, shortly and, and to uh, hear your monthly updates. Uh, it'll be exciting to see how this plays out over the next uh, couple of months. It's, uh, it's key to uh, our um, success going forward. Councillor Knack, I, I welcome you this afternoon, sir. Uh, any questions for Ms. Troop before you go forward? None for me, thank you. It's a great presentation. Right. Good to see you, All right, All right. good. Carry on then, uh, Mr. Jankowski. Okay, well, thank you very much, Aaron, and uh, <laughs> thanks for participating and look forward to having further discussions. So with yeah, that, maybe I'll move me. on to the, the next quick update. Uh, if I can get the slide deck back up, just a quick update on uh, what I've already referenced. Uh, this week, we concluded the first round of touch points, my touch points with uh, your councils. And uh, the, the last two council meetings were on Monday with the city of Edmonton and on Tuesday with the city of Beaumont. Uh, that uh, while that concluded the first round in many or most of the discussions with the councils, um, there was a real desire, I think, to continue sharing the information with regards to the ongoing work of standing up this commission, and in particular, the work that we just discussed. And so the commitment that I've made to all of the councils is that I am more than, than willing to come back and provide information, additional information at the right points in time. And I will be having the discussion with you members of the board as when you might want there to be another round of these types of consultations or types of engagements. Uh, but certainly I also remain uh, at the disposal of the, uh, the, the heads of council, the CAOs and councils themselves, more than willing to come forward and provide additional information whenever it's desired. Uh, my anticipation is that it might be most effective for us to engage in this kind of uh, round of, of uh, information sharing perhaps twice a year. Uh, and we might want to tailor exactly when that happens to tie in with key milestones in our evolution. Uh, but I, I, all I can say is that the, uh, the round of discussions went exceedingly well. There were a number of tough questions and a number of interesting perspectives that were voiced. I will also add that uh, on April 12th, we've got a presentation that has been requested by the Council of, the, of Strath Strathcona County. And I'm also engaging in discussions with the CAOs of, uh, of Parkland County and of um, Leduc County. I think both of those discussions have been scheduled now uh, in order to, uh, to A, brief the CAOs uh, on the progress of the, the commission and B, assess whether or not, in their opinion, there is a desire to bring that, this kind of discussion forward to their respective councils. I will pause there if there are questions. Councillor uh, Gronberg, go ahead, sir. Thank you. Um, so I just have a question. Is there any update on um, the Enoch Cree Nation um, on the, uh, them showing any interest or anything like that? Uh, I will be frank and say not yet. Um, we, I reached out to, uh, to your municipality and uh, I did get the contact person for the, the or contact name and, and information for the one person that uh, uh, has, has a strong relationship with uh, the Enoch Cree First Nation and I intend to follow up to see uh, if there's an, uh, a desire for a meeting in the near future. I just have not yet had the uh, opportunity to follow, follow through on that completely. Okay, thank you. Also, um, just in terms of like response, you said that you overall had a strong response from a lot of the municipalities. Did you feel that you had 
um, strong pushback from any particular ones. I know my municipality, we, um, we had a, a few councillors who were quite strong in their opinions. So was there any other municipalities um, that also had some strong reactions? I, I read an article about Edmonton, but um, just curious to know about any others too. Yeah, I think they, there were a number of questions that came up in a number of the meetings. Um, I think at the core, there is uh, in a number of the municipalities, uh, a desire and a real thirst to gain the additional information that will be coming from the work that we're, we just spoke about. Uh, at the end of the day, many municipalities are continue to, to want to see A, the comparison between what had been envisioned in the original business case and what might be proposed now for opening day service. And secondly, there was a lot of, uh, there were a lot of questions about the value proposition associated with that opening day service. So that balance that I spoke about between desired service and ability to fund that desired service mm -hmm. is what we'll be exploring through the next uh, next three or four months. And I think that is really the, the core of many of the questions that were asked by many of the municipalities. So um, while I wouldn't characterize it necessarily as pushback, I think just as, as happened in the town of Devon, as, as you correctly pointed out, there, uh, there were questions about uh, what kind of service we might suggest for opening day and what the cost associated with that might be. And I've had to indicate to the member municipalities that that's work that's getting underway. And we will be sharing that with the board and ultimately with the, uh, the administrations as well. Uh, and we will be figuring out with the administrations as to how best move forward with a discussion if desired with the individual councils as well. I mean, I, yes, I, I appreciate those comments. I think my last thing my, might be, it's not a question, more of a comment, but um, I would just strongly recommend the moment that we have that ability to um, have like a service plan and you know, kind of have a better idea of what the cost will be. Um, that's when I think it would be really important to go through the second round of um, municipal updates um, to provide the most time for you know municipals to react and then adjust. Because um, if we're looking at the summer for the timeline of you know, kind of having a better idea of what this will cost and what this will look like, then that leaves the fall. And this has taken all of like spring, January to March. So it's taken a couple months for you to go through each of the municipalities and update them. Um, so that doesn't leave a ton of time if that's the fall um, to provide time for reactions when we're hoping to start it in early uh, next year. So that would just be like, as soon as you can, that would be my strongest recommendation. Appreciate that. Fair enough, uh, Councillor Gronberg. Uh, I think, uh, you know, I mean, uh, suffice it to say is that we've, uh, we've got a new uh, set of councils around the region and they don't have the history that, uh, that many uh, councils had uh, working through the process for the last uh, eight years on this project and, and rightfully so. Uh, there's some questions, uh, particularly coming out of COVID. I mean, we can't, we can't uh, say that nothing happened in the world. Uh, lots have happened in the world and we need to react accordingly. Uh, I am convinced, however, that the, uh, that the value proposition of harmonizing our services and working together for uh, both uh, efficiencies in terms of cost and the elimination of systemic barriers to provide for a better customer service. Those, those merits stand on their own and the savings are real and we'll be able to demonstrate that under a, a new service offering. So looking forward to what comes out of this poll and uh, yeah, and to Councillor Gromberg's point that as soon as we can get it and then uh, be able to socialize that within our uh, councils and within our communities, the better off we'll be. Any other comments before uh, I ask? Mr. Jankowski, carry on. Okay, fair, fair enough. Uh, go ahead, Paul.
sorry about that. Just uh, carrying on and moving to the uh, the third uh, uh, sub item. Uh, just a really quick one. Uh, as we've discussed in the past, and as the board has indicated, uh, there is a desire, uh, the board's desire, to move to hybrid type meetings. Um, I'm happy to advise that uh, the, uh, the the main structural work in the new meeting room is being done last week and this week uh, to try to accommodate some of the changes that need to take place. And uh, we have, uh, we're trying to confirm, although the, the furniture order was placed back in December for the, uh, the, the meeting room furniture, the conference room furniture, we're hopeful that that furniture will arrive in April. And as such, what we are proposing is that the time would be right for us to, uh, to start making the preparations for hybrid type meetings in person and virtual. Uh, to start as of the, the uh, scheduled meeting date of the regular board meeting on May 19th. Uh, I believe that it is, a, uh, it is appropriate for the board to make that decision as opposed to the administration making that decision. And as such, we are recommending that uh, that, that decision be, uh, be made and ratified uh, for us to start preparing for that barring any unforeseen uh, delays, further delays in the, uh, the delivery of the, the new furniture for the, the meeting room. Well, <clears throat> thank you for that update, uh, Mr. Jankowski. I, 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 for one, are looking forward to meeting in, uh, in person in, in May uh, uh, on 6th and Jasper and, uh, and be able to uh, have the experience of meeting together in person again. Certainly enjoyed our offsite uh, strategic planning session. And uh, yeah, on my screen, uh, at least you are uh, an inch by an inch and it doesn't do justice to each of you. So anyway, uh, looking forward to that date. So we have a uh, motion here to uh, accept uh, the materials and discussion presented uh, as information. Would somebody care to read this one into the record? Councillor Makoff Swain, could I ask you to do that? Absolutely. Uh, so I'll read that uh, the board accepts uh, as information and materials and discussion as I move my Zoom things around, sorry, uh, as presented during the CEO update and direct administration to prepare for transition to hybrid meetings at the uh, as of the date of the regular board meeting schedule for May 19, 2022. Thank you very much, sir. Any opening comments? No, like you, um, uh, I enjoyed our in-person sessions and, and uh, while I, uh, I think this hybrid approach uh, makes sense, I will certainly try to be there in person as much as I can. So looking forward to it. Fair enough. Any other comments, Councillor Houston? Oh, I just, uh, I just wanted to add that I, uh, as uh, Councillor Munkoff Swain said, I appreciate the uh, opportunity to meet in person as well, and um, you know, and and the ability for us to have hybrid meetings is is great because, uh, you know, there are lots of opportunities to you know connect from other locations, and provides that continuity of maintaining that commitment to the board. So I think it's great and I uh, appreciate seeing this being brought forward. Thank you. You make a good point there, Councillor Houston. Uh, Zoom for as long as we've been on it for the last two years has certainly added a, an opportunity to, uh, to fulfill our commitments irrespective of where we may be at the moment. So uh, without, if I hear no other comments, uh, Councillors Makoswain, if you have any closing comments, I'll call the question then all in favor of the motion, please uh, raise your hand. And I see that as unanimous. Thank you very much, everyone. Looking forward to donuts as well. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough for that. That's a true statement. I hear they're good downtown too. So there you go. We'll be looking forward to that. On to item no number five, Mr. Jankowski. Thank you very much. Um, 
so I, just a little bit of background to this item before you'll see a series of motions that we have suggested for the board's consideration. Uh, I'm sure that the board remembers well the discussions that took place during the process of approving the 2022 operating and capital budget and the desire to minimize impacts on municipal uh, budgets the, uh, of the, the member municipalities in 2022, given the fact that we're proposing to start operating transit in 2023. Um, given that decision uh, and the fact that the startup operating costs totally combined uh, are now uh, proposed to be 6.393 million, and given the fact that the initial debt that was taken out for the startup of the commission, which anticipated the start of repayment of that debt in 2022, the figure that was originally used for the purposes of uh, securing the, the debt financing was $5 million. And the board recognized through the budget approval process that that debt limit would now have to be raised in 2022 from 5 million to, as we've proposed, $7 million. Why it's $7 million is related to the fact that while the stand up for 2022 uh, will, it's anticipated that we will, we will be at 6.393 million uh, or thereabouts, uh, recognizing that uh, as part of the approval of the proposed 2023 budget when it's brought forward, the process of identifying and making the requisitions to the member municipalities and then receiving the, the requisitions from them will take some time in early 2023 and recognizing that the provincial uh, approved debt limit is at $7 million uh, in order to uh, preclude having to go through this process yet again towards the end of this year. What we're proposing to the board is that uh, the board move forward with revising the, uh, the, the required debt limit from 5 million to 7 million. And there are a few steps uh, that would be necessary to do that. Um, first of all, the borrowing bylaw that has been uh, adopted by the board requires an amending bylaw to change the figures in the original uh, borrowing bylaw from $5 million to $7 million, resulting in a newly consolidated uh, bylaw should the board move forward in that regard. Uh, in your package, you, uh, I believe, have got a red line copy of the, uh, the uh, bylaw number three that, and how it would be amended. The second step would be the uh, the revision to the debt management policy, which or originally specified a limit of 85% of the provincially prescribed debt limit. Um, given that the provincial limit or provincially approved amount is $7 million, if we're going to go to that, then we need a what I would consider or suggest would, should be considered as a temporary override for the stand up. And uh, lastly, once the amended bylaw and policy are in place, then the, what we would require or recommend is that uh, you uh, provide the administration with the authority to work with the TD Bank and to issue requests to the City of Edmonton and the City of St. Albert to continue with the process of providing the guarantees or securing the, the guarantees uh, for that that increased amount in the same proportions as were used for the original $5 million, i.e. two thirds of the 2 million to be requested from the city of Edmonton and one third to be requested from the second largest shareholder that being the city of St. Albert. Um, I will pause there and I know that Lori Shea Smith is on uh, as well, either one of us is happy to answer questions related to this before we move into a series of suggested motions, uh, which effectively would enact or move forward with the steps that I just sort of read through. Okay, thank you. Um, any questions? Councillor Houston, do I see a hand or? Yeah, 
I just uh, one quick question. Um, I know that we've uh, had this discussion with the uh, Boring by Law. We're certainly supportive of the approach. Uh, what's uh, we're taking this to get a loan guarantee from Edmonton and City of Saint Albert. Is there a plan B, or is, or is there any fear that they wouldn't uh, provide a loan guarantee? And if so, what's plan B? So perhaps I will start. I know that uh, Lori has had discussions with the administrations to socialize the administration uh, of, at both the city of St. Albert and the city of Edmonton. I know that uh, this issue came up, for example, in the, uh, the discussion with city of Edmonton council that took place on Monday. Um, we are uh, strongly suggesting that this is the only way to move forward uh, with regards to the uh, getting the debt financing for this uh, this additional two million dollars. Um, I think the, the any any discussions about uh, potential changes to this, I would suggest perhaps uh, would make sense in to to move those into a closed session. Uh, of the board if, uh, if there is a desire to do so. But this to, to our administration reflects the discussions that were held during the budget preparation. And uh, there's no question that without this additional uh, debt financing, the, the other alternatives that we might need to consider would uh, have some pretty significant uh, additional consequences. Um, Paul, I'd just like to add to that, just to confirm to the to the board that I have, as Paul said, been working with the city of Edmonton staff. They do have a bylaw, um, you know, waiting in the wings where, where they're waiting for the board's approval and then our official minutes to come out. So, and st the same thing with the uh, city of St. Albert. Both will be bringing uh, their bylaws to council in April. And then the city of Edmonton schedule has it been, um, you know, seen for the second and third reading the end of May, and then St. Albert will be the first week of June. I have also had discussions with TD Bank um, just around their process. I, I wanted to make sure that I, I had enough time and worked backwards. And um, so their process is about a couple of weeks. And after we do get the board's approval, um, we, I will work with the TD Bank to, because we can do some things in advance of getting the guarantees and, and then be ready to go when we when and if we get the guarantees. Um, in addition, I did refresh our forecast uh, this morning. And so, you know, our spending, we haven't spent as much as we had in the budget for January and February, but it is still looking like it's the July uh, timeframe. I'm still aiming to have our debt increase by the end of June. That would make me feel a lot uh, better. And, uh, but, but we're still doing good. So as Paul said, if we do need to have another discussion about what plan B would be, um, we still do have a little bit of, of time. Hey, thanks. <clears throat> Councillor Finstead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to <clears throat> commend Paul and your staff on being proactive in this regard and not waiting until it became uh, problematic before we started to seek out a solution. So thank you very much for taking the steps necessary to make sure that we are, that we are as prudent as possible and uh, with regard to our, our cash flow management and uh, thank, uh, efforts are greatly appreciated. I know it's a lot of extra work and had we foreseen this from the start, we would have done it initially as opposed to having to come after the fact, but regardless, it's, it's gonna be done, it's gonna be handled and it's the right move at the right time. Thank you very much, Councillor Finstadt. Uh, good statement. All right, seeing no further uh, hands raised, uh, we have a series of motions, one, two, three, and four, but we'll start off with number one and maybe uh, uh, maybe I'll just ask different uh, board members to to move different motions, that way we're, we're all engaged here. Um, someone want to, to move motion number one? Sure, I'll move that one. Mr. Chair. Okay. Councillor Harris, would you like to read it into the motion, into the record? 
I so will. I would move that the board adopt bylaw to amend bylaw three, a bylaw authorizing borrowing line of credit for the Edmonton Metropolitan Transit Services Commission as follows. Number one, part two, section four is amended by deleting $5 million and replacing it with $7 million. And two, part three, section eight, A, is amended by deleting $5 million and replacing it with $7 million. Thank you very much, sir. Certainly accept the motion. Any, any commentary do you believe necessary here? I do not. All right. Any other comments then? Seeing none, I'll ask for a vote using the raise the hand function. Go for it. And I believe that's unanimous. Thank you very much, everyone. Moving right along to motion number two, who would uh, care to make this motion? Councillor Gromberg, can I ask you to do that? Absolutely. Um, I will read it out that the board approve a revision to board policy B5.3 debt management with a revision date of March 17th, 2022 as follows. Number one, the addition of except as otherwise stated in this policy to the policy statement, the commission must adhere to an internal debt limit of 85% of the provincially prescribed debt limit and debt servicing limit. And number two, the addition of the statement Despite the above, uh, the Commission may borrow up to 7 million as authorized by the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Ministerial Order number MSD 051-21 uh, to finance the Commission's operational startup costs to the debt limits section of the policy. Thank you very much, sir. Any commentary necessary, do you think? No, just a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> Great comments. Uh, seeing none, then I'll again ask the question. Raise the hand. And that's unanimous. Thank you very much, Councillor Gromberg. Motion number three. Would somebody care to make this motion? I can do that for you. Thank you, Councillor Finstad. Motion number three. I move the board approve a borrowing in the form of an increase of $2 million in the operating line of credit secured through the TD Bank in accordance with the revised debt management policy B-5.3 and direct administration to work with TD Bank to secure the increase in the operating line of credit from $5 million to $7 million. Thank you very much, sir. Any commentary necessary? I don't believe so. I think we've discussed this uh, in detail. Okay, fair enough. Again, I'll call the question, raise your hand. And that is carried unanimously. Thank you very much, Councillor Finstead. I was waiting for this one for number four. Uh, <laughs> Councillor Knack, may I ask you to uh, move this motion? Oh, I'd love to, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, so I'll move that the board request that the city of Edmonton and the city of St. Albert provide security in the form of a guarantee to TD Bank at a value of two thirds, one million three hundred thirty three thousand three hundred thirty three dollars and one third six hundred sixty six thousand six hundred sixty seven dollars respectively and commit to the commission to reimburse the city of Edmonton and the city of St. Albert for any direct costs incurred to provide and maintain the security required. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate that. Any commentary necessary? I don't think so. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you. I'll call the question. Raise your hand then. And thank you very much, everyone. And that passes unanimously. All right. I just want to thank both uh, Edmonton and St. Albert for uh, stepping up and helping with this, uh, this much needed uh, coverage, if you will, uh, security for the uh, necessary funding. Thank us in a few weeks when it's formal. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough to that. Fair <laughs> enough to that. Thank you, uh, Councillor Knack. Uh, I love your uh, green shirt, by the way. It is that I see Councillor Houston uh, has uh, dived in on the green too here. So happy uh, <laughs> uh, we're, our Irish is coming out, I guess. All right, moving right along. Um, we have the audit and finance. Uh, 
Mr. Over Chairman. To you, uh, Mr. Jankowski, uh, I'll leave you to introduce it. Okay, thank you. Um, just before we sort of move on from the last item, I do want to uh, just express special thanks to both Lori and to Bill Shores and Cal Kathleen L. Hatton Lake from Shores Jardine. Um, as you saw, those last motions were, uh, they, they were a mouthful and they were, <laughs> were a little onerous to put together. And I know that all three of them worked extremely hard to make sure that we got the T's crossed and the I's dotted properly in terms of preparing those and, and ensuring that we don't uh, put the board and put the commission into a detrimental position in the future. So thank you to all three of them. Fair enough, thank you. I, uh, I agree there, It's uh, it gives, board members uh, great confidence when we we have confidence in our in our administration and our legal support so thank you very much carry on then mr jankowski okay so i i will introduce this and i'm not sure if Lori wants to jump in but um we we consciously excluded the minutes from the uh, audit and finance committee meeting of March 3rd from the consent agenda, recognizing that there was a presentation during that committee of the, uh, the audit work that uh, has been carried out by metrics group uh, and the consolidated financial statements. Jeff Alliston from metrics group presented the, the work that uh, metrics carried out to the audit and finance committee. Uh, that work was discussed, was reviewed. Uh, there was a discussion and a, uh, a review in camera as well. And uh, what, we've, uh, what we wanted to do as a result of the recommendation from the Audit and Finance Committee was to invite Jeff back today to provide a high level summary presentation of the findings uh, to the entire board. Uh, and uh, allow the board to have a discussion about those, both uh, in, in uh, person uh, as well as uh, uh, potentially if the board desires in camera uh, with ultimately a, hopefully a motion uh, to move or to approve the audited uh, uh, financial statements and the result, results of the audit and to allow for the submission of those to the Ministry of uh, Municipal Affairs. Um, with that, uh, Lori, I'm not sure if you wanted to add anything else in introduction. I would. I see that Jeff has joined us. So hi, Jeff. Um, thanks for joining us today. I would just like to thank Jeff and his team, Danny and Claire. Um, even though, you know, the audit wasn't very complicated for 2021, given where we are in, in our startup, it's, you know, always really nice to have a, a clean audit and the team working together with our team worked very uh, well together. And so I really, really appreciated that. And um, looking forward to having more complexity this year and continuing our relationship as they audit us again in 2022. Awesome, thank you. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks for having me. I will put up a quick PowerPoint presentation here so we can uh, go the financial statements. Totally, can everybody see that okay? Um, does it show up as the one, one screen or two? Two. Okay. Well, that's no good. Uh, I'll do this quickly, hopefully. Hmm. Sometimes I wish I was a bit more tech savvy when it came to some of this. It seems to work, and then all of a sudden it doesn't work for me. <laughs> um, anybody knows how to get it so that it's just the one screen i'd appreciate it but well let me try this actually go, go to display settings uh the, how does that um, work i um, just unplug my second monitor how's that there you go, <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> okay, you go. <laughs> all right so anyways uh yeah my name is jeff Allison. i'm a partner with uh, with metrics group uh, responsible for the audit for edmonton metro transit services commission uh, so usually when I start these presentations, I like to give a bit of an overview to an audit, uh, the importance of it or why we have it. And really it's to enhance the degree of confidence of intended users. So those users being yourselves as board members, 
uh, municipal affairs, partnering municipalities, those organizations, individuals that would have an interest in the financial results or performance of, uh, of uh, Edmonton Metro. Uh, this is achieved by us as auditors expressing an opinion. And uh, we give assurance whether the financial statements are free from material misstatements. So as auditors, we seek reasonable assurance. So it's a high level assurance, but it's not absolute assurance. As auditors, we also exercise professional judgment and uh, maintain professional skepticism. So uh, we say we have a questioning mind. Uh, we say alert to conditions which may indicate possible misstatements. Such areas there would include cutoff. We want to make sure that uh, transactions that were uh, reported in 2021 relate to the 2021 year, and those uh, that occurred subsequent to year end in 2022 have been recorded in the correct period as well. Uh, so we do do a lot of work at looking at uh, transactions after year end to make sure if they should have been accrued for or not in the 2021 year. Also a critical assessment of, of the audit evidence. Uh, so when it comes to our auditor's report on page uh, three and four of the financial statements at the top, we give our opinion. Our opinion is that the financial statements present fairly in all material respects, uh, the financial uh, position, uh, results of operations in accordance with Canadian public sector accounting standards. And those are the accounting standards that Edmonton Metro reports under. It's also the same accounting standards that your local governments report under. Uh, basis for opinion is in accordance with Canadian generally accepted auditing standards. Uh, we then, uh, in the third paragraph, uh, responsibility and management, those charged with governance for the, uh, for, sorry, for the preparation and fair presentation of the financial statements. And then on page two of the auditor's report, we outline our auditor's responsibility for the audit, which is to indicates our objective, which is to obtain reasonable assurance that the financial statements are free from material misstatement. Uh, procedures depend on auditor's judgment. Uh, we consider relevant internal controls as well as evaluate accounting policies and estimates uh, when it comes to um, your organization. Uh, so in this slide here, just a little snapshot of where the organization was at as at December 31, 2021, you'll see you had uh, goods and services tax recoverable for the year of 94,000. Uh, liabilities, so bank indebtedness, uh, so what's owed is 2.4 million. Uh, accounts payable and accrued liabilities is 189,000. That was made up of 171,000 of uh, expenses paid to vendors, as well as 17,500 in employee benefit obligations to be paid. So that left you with liabilities of 2.6 million and a net debt position at the end of the year of 2.5. Uh, Non-financial assets, you had some prepaid expenses and deposits. There was a lease deposit there for 21,000, as well as an office furniture deposit for 8,000. Uh, for the new uh, new facilities for the 2022 year, and that left you with an accumulated deficit of 2.47 million. Uh, the next page of the financial statement outlines your statement of operations and accumulated deficit. So here you'll see uh, uh, expenses uh, paid during the year. Uh, so professional and consulting fees totaled 1.9 million. You had spent 1.5 on uh, on professional and, and contractor fees. Uh, 120,000 on legal, uh, 313,000 on resourcing costs. So those are the main categories in there. Uh, salaries, wages, and benefits at 480,000. Uh, materials and supplies at 44,000. Uh, it's left you with total expenses of 2.47 million, uh, which resulted in your annual deficit for the year and your opening accumulated deficit or ending, sorry, accumulated deficit for the year. Um, other uh, parts and notes of importance in the financial statements would be your debt limits. Uh, so your debt limit here uh, is at 2.4 uh, million. Uh, debt servicing limit as well, 2.4 million. So in the notes to the financial statement, it indicates that uh, municipal affairs, uh, the Minister of Affairs would prescribe a debt and debt service limit of 7 million. Uh, so that's noted in note four of the financial statements. Uh, there, we looked, uh, we noted this today, but we are going to make a change on note four. Currently, on the draft you have, we have indicated here that the debt limit is calculated at 0 0.5 times revenue of the commission, and the debt service limit is calculated at 0.1 times. So that would be um, in relation to, um, yeah, in relation to uh, the Edmonton Metro Transit uh, not being. Um, I guess, eligible for the two times revenue and the 0 0.35 times, which is actually what was originally calculated uh, when comprising the initial debt limit and uh, the factoring in of the 7 million. So we do want to change that to indicate that. 
Uh, later in my audit findings report, which I'll pull up here in a couple of minutes, uh, you'll see comments in relation to the to the debt limit. So I just wanted to uh, to note that here on the final copy that we'll just change those uh, those amounts to be in relation to how it was uh, calculated at that time. Uh, so in summary, um, annual deficit for the year for 2.47 million, uh, net financial debt position of 2.5. Again, audit findings report, uh, which I have here for the board, um, there was a uh, noted an internal control deficiency and related to a, uh, EFT payments. So I'll go over quickly. Uh, no unusual accounting policy or estimates, uh, unrecorded misstatements, uh, some other matters, and uh, no significant difficulties. I uh, just want to thank Lori, her team for, for their help and performance of the audit. Uh, everything on our end, we were able to get the information we needed in order to complete our work. and. Um, I could take any questions now, or I can uh, do the other report maybe, and then uh, take them then. Okay, thank you, Mr. Allison. Why don't you continue until you're done, and then we'll we'll go for questions all at the same time. How's that? Yeah, that works for me. Okay. Um, just because I might answer some of them in this other report. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Yeah. Um, so if everybody can see this one, okay. Mm -hmm. um, so this is our audit findings report. Uh, in relation uh, to our audit, uh, to the audit financial statements. Uh, so in the executive summary, and really the purpose of this report is just to uh, promote clear two-way communication between ourselves and the board, um, and just to provide a follow-up from our audit planning report uh, into our audit findings report, any conclusions that we would have had from our audit. Uh, we are, uh, we feel that we are independent of the board. Uh, we do not hold a financial interest or have an economic dependence on uh, Edmonton Metro. In order to finalize the audit, uh, we'll complete our uh, subsequent event procedures up to today's date. Uh, we'll obtain a signed management representation letter. Uh, we'll complete our required communication, which we're doing right now through this discussion. And then we'll obtain evidence of the board approval in order to issue the financial statement. Uh, there were no changes from our audit plan uh, of significance uh, in, in relation to our audit findings report. Uh, responsibilities, uh, just, just outlines our responsibilities that we did perform our audit in accordance with Canadian generally accepted auditing standards and that the audit, uh, audit financial statements are in accordance with Canadian public sector accounting standards. Uh, responsibility of management and those charge of governance uh, for the preparation and fair presentation of financial statements. Uh, we talked about materiality in here. Uh, so materiality, uh, we set our materiality at 3% of operating expenses. So we feel that if the deficit of the uh, of Edmonton Metro were to increase by 55,000 or decrease by 55,000, that a user of the financial statements would not have a change in their opinion on the financial poor performance for the year of Edmonton Metro. Uh, so again, that's kind of how materiality is, um, uh, I guess, uh, interpreted when it comes to an audit and that the users being yourselves as board members, um, you know, municipalities with ownership. So that's, uh, in relation to our professional judgment that we feel 55,000 or 3% of operating expenses is a good benchmark. Uh, when it comes to audit results, so these are areas that we had a focus initially to begin our audit. So management override of control is a big area. Uh, here we feel um, you know, management could potentially make journal entries to manipulate the financial results of Edmonton Metro. Uh, so we use data analytic tools to identify journal entries that exhibit uh, specific characteristics that may potentially uh, be outside of business scope. So we then test those journal entries to make sure that they are okay. So we had no significant findings in that area. Uh, resourcing costs, including salaries, wages, and benefits. We want to make sure that the employees that are actually hired are being paid the correct rate and that there aren't any uh, fraudulent employees. So we did not have any significant findings there as well. Other operating expenses, we want to make sure that expenses actually relate to Edmonton Metro and record in the correct period. Uh, so we have identified, um, uh, we didn't identify any misstatements, but we do have a significant control deficiency of note in our, in our report to go over. Uh, bank indebtedness and credit facility, uh, same thing. We want to make sure that they're recorded accurately uh, and that the debt limits are recorded accurately. So during our process or work in there, uh, we did note uh, uh, discrepancy with the, with the debt limits, which we uh, brought, um, brought forward in our report in the other matters section. Uh, so significant findings, uh, we did not have any significant findings in relation to your county policies, judgments, and estimates. Uh, they're in line with your policies as well as in accordance with Canadian public sector accounting standards. 
Uh, we did not encounter any significant difficulties. Uh, once we receive a signed copy of the management representation letter, we'll be able to issue signed financial statements. Uh, when it comes to internal controls, um, uh, the course of audit work performed. So we did identify a control deficiency. So uh, in summary here, in our observation, uh, we had noted uh, currently uh, vendor EFT payments, uh, new vendors are utilized by the commission. Uh, the manager of financial services is responsible for entering the vendor banking information. Uh, so due to the commission's current side, the manager is also responsible for preparing vendor payments. So there exists a potential fraud risk as manager is responsible for processing payments, has the ability to change the vendor banking information in TD web. Uh, so due to this lack of segregation of duties, there exists the opportunity for the manager to change the vendor banking information and continue processing payments to existing vendors. So we have noted um, this in a response to the risk in 2022 management uh, has implemented a mitigating detective control of uh, reviewing a sample of vendor banking information as part of the month end process. Uh, so our recommendation when possible, we recommend removing the payment uh, processing ability in TD web for the manager. But until that uh, such time as more staff are available, uh, this is the current uh, pro our procedure to be in place. So manager's response is um, segregation of duties, the basic lack or basic building block, sorry, of a sustainable risk management and the internal controls for the commission. So management acknowledges the existence of inherent risk uh, with processing payments via EFT using TD web business. Uh, to, so to ensure the commission has sufficient operate, operational capacity and coverage management does not feel currently feasible to implement a preventive control and implement control systems, limiting the ability to create or update vendor master data and payment process in a TD web. Uh, so management is recommend, recommending a continuation of detective control established in early 2022 uh, to mitigate the risk due to lack of segregation of duties during the weekly EFT batch review. The director of finance will review a change log generated from TD Web and review any bank account changes with the manager of financial services. Uh, when the director is acting as the manager and CEO, the CEO will perform the director's role in the process. So in essence, somebody will be reviewing to make sure if any changes are done, uh, that they're signed off and, um, and that if uh, in order to detect potentially uh, the changing of banking information. Uh, we did not have any unrecorded misstatements uh, from our audit. Uh, and then other matters. So uh, the debt management policy. So currently uh, the debt management policy uh, is consistent with Alberta Regulation 76-2000 uh, Regional Service Commission debt limit. So the regulation defines the debt limit for a regional service commission uh, that provides public utility services as debt limit of two times revenue and debt servicing line uh, times uh, 0 0.35. Under Part 15.1 of the MGA Regional Service Commission, public utility is defined as described in section excluding the provision of public transportation operating by or on behalf of a municipality. So what that MGA Act is saying is that Edmonton Metro would not fall under that guideline uh, to have a two times or a 0.35 times debt servicing. Uh, the regulation defines the debt limit for a regional services commission that provides services other than public utility as 0.5 and 0.1. So we had noted this um, during our audit. Um, so I think there's discussions with that, just trying to make sure that uh, everybody is aware of what the um, debt limits uh, should be or will be for the commission uh, going forward as it uh, continues its uh, operations. Um, so that was that comment there. Appendix one uh, just indicates our independence. We do not hold a financial interest position, personal business relationship or economic dependence. Uh, management representation letter just in here to um, indicate that management was forthcoming with information in relation to our audit. Uh, appendix three of our report outlines new uh, accounting standards, uh, main one being asset retirement obligations. I won't spend too much time on that, but uh, pretty much with asset retirement obligations, uh, this is where there's a potential legal obligation associated with tangible capital assets. Currently, Edmonton Metro doesn't have any, but you are looking to acquire assets from other municipalities as your operations grow. Uh, potentially with those assets could come asset retirement obligations where uh, there will be a legal obligation to decommission some of these assets, uh, potentially remediate any contamination, uh, post-retirement activities. So 
Uh, this section is to be adopted on, um, on uh, December 31st, 2023. Uh, so we just are, uh, there's some slides in here as to what it is, uh, things to look for in relation to that, and uh, to make sure that cost seat is in place so that uh, that handbook section can be adopted accordingly. And that is the end of that report. And I could uh, take any questions then at this time. Thank you very much, Mr. Alston. Any questions from board members? Well, that was a fairly straightforward presentation and in depth. Thank you very much, Mr. Alston. Now I'm gonna uh, ask uh, Councillor uh, Lori uh, as chair of the Audit and Finance Committee uh, to make comments from an audit and finance uh, committee perspective and then uh, move to motion when he uh, uh, deems it's appropriate to do so. Over to you, Councillor Lori. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, no, again, thank you to Mr. Alliston. Uh, the presentation that you received today is uh, almost the same presentation that we received in the audit and finance committee, uh, but with a little bit more explanation and details around a few of the points that the audit and finance committee had some questions on. Uh, so very happy to see that. Uh, we did ask for a little bit more detail in regards to the internal controls on the payment of vendors and then as well seek some clarity in respect to the future debt borrowing limit. Uh, we did ask some questions in regards to how the future debt borrowing limit will impact uh, the organization once we become operational, um, but at that point in time we will uh, look to Mr. Jankowski to speak with municipal affairs and, and any impacts that uh, we may have at that point. And essentially at what point in time we will switch from startup funding to general operations uh, when the new debt limit or the, the current debt limit uh, provisions for a transit public utility would apply. So with that, uh, I think we had some great questions for Mr. Alliston, and I do believe that he covered uh, pretty much all of them in his presentation today. So I encourage any other board members uh, with questions to fire them away. Um, and other than that, uh, Mr. Chair, I believe we were going to go in camera prior that's to the motion correct. and we were gonna make the motion afterwards, so. That's correct. So I'll get you to make the motion to move in camera and we'll have a, uh, in Kramer's session with the, our auditor if uh, uh, for as long as that's required and then we'll reconvene in public and then we'll make the final motion. So. so thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll move the board move in camera with accordance of provision of division two exceptions to disclosure of the Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act known as FOIP RSA 2000 CF 25 as per section 16 through 28. Fair enough, thank you. I'll call the question for moving in camera. And that is unanimous. Thank you. All right, so we'll wait. Uh, I'm assuming, Agata, you're going to give us a breakout uh, room. And, uh, and uh, Mr. Alliston, if you could join us in there. And, uh, and uh, if the board has anything to uh, uh, talk to you about. We'll do so at that time and then we'll reconvene in public. Can I ask somebody to make that first motion? We'll have it on the screen right away. Councilor Lori, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. And sorry, I'm just gonna flip in my package to that first motion because I believe that is the one regarding the audit. There we go. Uh, so I'll move that the board approve the March 3rd, 2022 Audit and Finance Committee meeting minutes. Uh, number two, the audited financial statements, the financial information return and the audit findings report for the year end December 31st, 2021. And number three, the submission of the audited financial statements and the financial information return to Alberta Municipal Affairs prior to the May 1st, 2022 deadline. Thank you, accept that motion. Uh, it's appropriate that you as the chair of the audit and finance committee make that motion. Any opening comments? Uh, just to say that I really appreciate all the work that went in by our auditor and our administration uh, in relation to getting this done and taken care of. Obviously, being the uh, first one for the EMTSC, it's a little bit unique and we expect it to be uh, much different in the years to come. So again, just uh, a tip of the hat to our administration for all of their work on that and our auditor and look forward to continuing on with that relationship. Okay, thank you. Any other comments from any board member? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor? 
And that's unanimous. Thank you very much. Mr. Chair, if I can just interrupt just for a second. There was a previous motion that procedurally we should probably get through as well. Uh, the acceptance of the materials and discussion as presented in camera. Okay, can I ask somebody to make that motion? Yeah, go ahead so, here, I can do it. Oops. Thank, thank you, Councillor Finstad. I move the board accept this information, the materials and discussion as presented in camera. Okay, I'll call the question, all in favor then? And that's carried unanimously. Thank you. Uh, nice catch there, uh, Mr. Jankowski. Appreciate that. So we're on to the WSP motion. Okay, who's ready to read a long shot here? Somebody who's willing to make the I short. I can do that for you. All right, thank you. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to minimize my uh, thumbnail here so I can read this. That the um, I'd like to make a motion that the board approve an addendum for additional scope of work and fee adjustment with WSP Canada Incorporated for the detailed regional transit service planning and bottom up costing project on the grounds that key members of the WSP project have the background knowledge by virtue of the past business case work and significant experience working with the public and stakeholders in the Edmonton Metro region. Edmonton EMTSC does not uh, does not have the internal capacity to plan and facilitate this function. The EMTSC requires public engagement planning and facilitation services for the detailed regional transit services planning and bottom-up costing project. The WSP project team has a unique and foundational base of knowledge that cannot be replicated by another consultant within the timeline required to complete the public engagement scope of the work, the detailed regional plans and services, transit services planning and bottom-up costing project. A public procurement process for this work would delay and impede the completion of the detailed regional transit service planning and bottom-up costing project and in the result cause a significant inconvenience and substantial duplication of costs for the EMTSC. Only the WSB team has demonstrated ability to meet the requirement of this procurement while the EMTSC faces an unforeseeable urgency that prevents the EMTSC from obtaining the services required through an open procurement process and that the board approved the addition of $97,000 to the professional services contract awarded to WSPS Canada Incorporated to add the public engagement scope of work. Thank you. Thank you very much for doing that work of reading it in. I appreciate that, Councillor Houston. Certainly appreciate the, the, uh, the motion. Uh, any opening commentary? Okay, hearing none. Uh, any other board member choosing to weigh in on the topic? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor, raise your hand. And that is raised unanimously or carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Uh, the next motion there, uh, who would care to make this motion? Councillor Gromberg, can I get you to read it in, if you don't mind? I unfortunately don't think I should. Okay, fair enough. I'll do that for you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Finstead. So I move the board authorize the retention of Michael Walters through Berlin Communications to provide professional government and stakeholder relations services on the grounds that Michael Walters has the background knowledge by virtue of his direct involvement in building the business case and the stand-up of the commission. EMTSC requires professional government and stakeholder relations services to further the commission's strategic objectives. Michael Walters has a unique and foundational base of knowledge that cannot be replicated by another consultant within the timeline required. A public procurement process for this work would delay and impede the stand-up of the commission and in the result cause significant inconvenience and substantial duplication of costs for the EMTSC. Only Michael Walters of Berlin Communications has the demonstrated ability to meet the requirements of this procurement and the EMTSC faces an unforeseeable urgency that prevents EMTSC from obtaining the services through an open procurement process 
and that the board waive the one year period under section 46 of the director's code of conduct and approve a fee of $7,000 per month for six months with the potential for extension up to an additional six months to Ber Berlin Communications for professional government and stakeholder relations services. Thank you very much, Councillor Finstead. Any uh, particular comment by uh, board members? Councillor Knack, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to state for the record that I'll be abstaining from this vote as uh, per our code of conduct. I think that is the most appropriate course of action here. Thank you. Thank you very much for your uh, adherence to that, Councillor Knack. Any other commentary on the motion that's before us? Councillor Laurie. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I just want to express my appreciation for the thoroughness and consideration that the uh, Board of Directors for the EMTSC has taken in this decision and putting this motion forward. Uh, obviously, we, we understand that there are varying factors at play with the stand-up of the Commission that uh, require decisions to be made and actions to be taken in due time uh, to continue to move forward with our plan and ensure that we are able to deliver services as committed to the municipalities. Uh, in the original business case uh, in a timely manner. So while I, while I certainly know that there is a lot of, uh, of, of different uh, discussions that went on in relation to this, um, I think we've come to a, a good common ground on it and I'm happy to see the motion before us here today so that the commission can proceed with the continued work in getting stood up and operational as expeditiously as possible. Thank you very much, Councillor Laurie. Any other Councillor, or board member wishing to weigh in on the topic. All right, seeing none, I too want to uh, uh, express my deep appreciation for the board for the depth of the discussion that we had around this topic and the uh, concern and the uh, uh, determination to explore uh, the, the responsibilities of the board under uh, various trade agreements but also understanding the, uh, the imperative that's before the board in getting this particular piece of work accomplished. And to that end, uh, I too am certainly am supportive of the uh, motion that's before us. Councillor Laurie, anything, or um, Councillor Finstad, to, who moved that? I did. Uh, no, no further comment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks. It's been a long day. A thanks for your indulgence of me. I'll call a question. All right, we have four in favor. Those those opposed, and we have one opposed. So we have uh, councillors, uh, councillors, board members, Stuart Houston, Gordon Harris. And uh, Lori and uh, let me get this right Houston, Finstad, Lori, Harris, and Broadhead in approval against Councillor Gromberg, abstained. A board member, Councillor Knack. Mr. Chair, just a point of order I'm unsure of uh, the procedure under our governance bylaws. I'd just like to make sure that that's a recorded vote, please. Okay. Okay, that's been recorded. All right, thank you everyone. Um, all right, so the motion that's before us now, uh, this is a hard one, a motion to adjourn. <laughs> so, oh, moved. Moved. <laughs> so moved. All right, thank you and thank you for your indulgence, everybody. Thanks all, take care. Take care. Yeah. See you everyone, thanks very much. Yeah. Yeah, bye-bye.